Hello and welcome to Madverse TV. I will show you the new guide for House Harkonnen in Dune Spice Wars after the patch Dune 23. House Harkonnen is a very strong faction and can use oppression on the villages. You get 100% more production out of the village with a chance that the village rebels and after the oppression you get a little malus on your production but all in all it's a very good eco boost for you you also gain 50 intel by pillaging a village so you can spam your operations also your village gained five percent resource production per active militia since you suffer minus 10 percent resource production from the start Compared to the other factions, you need two militia to get even, but every other militia gives you the 5% extra resource production. At 5k hegemony, you can sacrifice your agents, and that reduces the mission's cost and preparation time. And that synergy is great with the next ability, because you get a 5% chance to receive a brainwashed agent every time you're killing an enemy non-mechanical unit. These brainwashed agents are almost as good as normal agents and you can still sacrifice them. At 10k hegemony, you can even sacrifice that agents to con not consume your operations. So you have even your expensive operations. You put maybe cast two times with a little delay between that. And another good bonus is that you get one additional agent slot in each non-faction field. That means, for example, you can even place more agents on Arrakis to produce even more authority. Let's get to the counselors. We start with Glossoraban, who's giving you one extra militia slot. That helps you a lot with the other bonus of the 5% resource production. And you get 100 Solari upon killing rebels. And if you're oppressing a lot, you will produce a lot of rebels. And so you can even get money by killing them. So the rebellion is not that bad for you anymore. He's a pretty good counselor right now. And next we have Lucky Nefut. He is giving you a 50% refund for your military units if they die. And um, the malus is that they don't level up and don't become stronger, but um, the more the fight, the higher the refunds for your military units. This third one is Fade Router Harkonnen, and he gives you the unique ability to use corruption on lands red resolutions. And yeah. If someone is voted to that resolution with the corruption, they will lose a landsred standing, 30. And he gives you also the ability, if you are oppressing villages, at least one village, you get plus 20% influence production, that's pretty nice, and also plus 100% agent recruitment speed, what helps you with the other unique Arconen abilities here like sacrificing agents etc and then we have peter de Vries, and he is giving you a bonus to your stealth probes um, they are weaker but they produce plus two interproduction uh, in, in enemy territory if they staying there and they don't need fuel cell anymore and they don't have supply so you can move with them all over the place and get some point of interest. Also, he gives you the ability, if you're assigning agents to enemy factions, all your non-factional fields have a bonus of plus 20% of the production. So, let's go to the eco and oppression part of that video. I prepared something for you on month three. We have two spice fields, one here in the north, one here in the south. And in the middle of that, we have three specific buildings that we need to accomplish our eco. We have the maintenance center that gives us minus 25% solari upkeep in all villages around this region and in this region. 
we have the spice silos that gives us plus 20 percent spice production in and neighboring regions like these two and we got the experimental furnace and this cost us the upkeep of uh, 10 fuel and 30 uh, solari but it gives us plus 30 percent on all economy buildings in that region and its neighbors and the, the upkeep cost in this region is 100 percent higher so the main part of harkon's economy is the oppression so we have a button here for oppression that cost us 20 manpower but this village will produce for three days 100 percent more of the resources after the three days it becomes oppressed and gets a malus of minus 20 percent local production for nine days and the chance to rebel each day so we click on that and let's see what we can get out of that and you can see already with only oppression of that two tiles we get uh, almost 600 instead of 200 and yeah this takes for three days main problem is for example if you're oppressing a village with water you might fall in a deficit after that because of that 20 percent um, malus after the oppression the rebels might be a problem that they stop you from producing at all but um yeah you should be prepared to kill them fast so you op oppressed a lot and the people are angry and the rebel scum appears good news we lose the minus 20% production malus we get um, after the oppression, even if it had three stacks. You have three uh, opportunities to get rid of the rebels, either sending your army, putting uh, office of order building in the village that helps your militia being able to attack the rebels. You get that after you achieve central command. Or you place a turret on a village neighboring close enough to being able to shoot on the rebels. With specific counselors and tags you get even some extra resources out of killing the rebels. And that's pretty great. As you can see we get fast rid of that rebellion. Make some extra money. And send them back to work. And Oppress again. <laughs> Do your job. So oh, let's take a look on the tech tree. As Harkon, you are also very flexible on the tech tree. I would recommend to go for a local dialect and then instill fear for the nice bonus that you can pillage every village without fearing to have a punishment. Instead, you get a bonus uh, reduction of your authority cost for every time you pillage the village. Then you might want to go for survival training for the supply and the armor logistics. So you get extra stuff from the pillaging and your units heal there. And you want at least have the basic eco tags like composite materials, advanced engineering and modular parts for the trade agreement and extra tool in your harvester. And then it's totally up to your win condition you are focusing on. If you are going for the economy victory, you might want to have economic lobbying and especially Harkon negotiation to make the Shom share prices cheaper. You want to have some more eco tax to boost your eco and if you have enough fuel in your area, you get the energy markets and if you have enough wind strength in your area, you go for the water trade. If you're going for the assassination, you need to go this path, the statecraft path by intelligence network, spying logistics, stealth gear, and the spying mastery for extra recruitment speed and extra agents. And if you want to go straight for domination, defeating all enemy main bases, you will have to go for the military part. 
And the most important build uh, techs are, of course, the techs with the with the main base upgrades in that, enhanced fortification building, the command post building, and the recruitment center. But Harkon has pretty strong um, techs late game by gaining five manpower for killing militia and rebels and do extra damage on them. But especially this one here, giving you um, until 20% power if units die around your army and you unlock the office of order for the uh, against the oppression rebellions and you get extra command points you also might want to have this one but they are not that important um, and you might want to have this one to um, reduce your solari upkeep for your military units and the recruitment cost if you're going for hegemony victory, you will go this pass, natives knowledge and outpost logistics. So you get the villages cheaper and the more villages, the more hegemony, the more likely you will win by that. And if you want to go for the political win, you will have to go for a land threat support to build the embassy building that will help you to get even more land threat standing and you need as fast as possible your land threat standing and then you have to build at least three statecraft buildings in the three slot district to get plus 100 max influence to be sure to outvote your opponents and now some tags i didn't explain um, but are Harkon specific, there is Harkon Legacy, giving one extra slot in land threat information and unlocks the interrogation center, which um, gives you intel by killing enemy units. Also, you can go for the political agreement treaty. Then you have crew reputation. It's a tier four tech, pretty hard to achieve. And you get a bonus for having less than 150 lands red standing so you get more into production more influence production and your army is five percent stronger um yeah it's usually not worse to go for t t4 um statecraft then we have monitoring networks that is also helpful for the assassination because um, it also increases your agent recruitment speed based on the number of villages you control and um, neighboring and enemy villages neighboring a village that is under oppression are 10 percent cheaper in authority cost but this happens to every faction so the other players also benefit from that tech Now I would like to talk with you about the main base upgrades. First you need to know is that administrative hall for the extra authority production and eco and the research center for the extra knowledge and hegemony are the most important buildings you would like to start with them. Then you can considering um, putting your yellow eco buildings into two slot districts for the extra fix 30 solari production or you want to have them on the three slot district for later for the extra 10 percent solari production what you want for sure is your military bases on your three slot district for the extra two power for your military units because Arkon is very aggressive and wants to take out and um, wants to put out damage um, the one slot district is always for your research tech tree so uh, usually at the start you go for expansion tech and eco techs and when you want to start with military techs you are that's almost always also the time that you can build your first main base upgrade so you can put it here um, to boost your military tech then you can put your blue stuff statecraft on your three slot district or the extra 100, uh, 100 max influence and intel. Um, the main base upgrades are almost all um, for every faction, like the extra armor, the extra training slots, the extra power for your military units, very important, and the command points. Not that important for the spice exchange rate, 
um, harvester gathering rate. You have the barracks, um, gives you extra experience, and you can um, yeah, upgrade your units at the barracks. Then you have your intelligence agency giving you 200% uh, agent recruitment speed and two additional operation slots. Then you can get a recycling vats that gives you a little bit more water and supply. And this Harkon specific interrogation center gives you 10 intel, then killing enemy units, and 10 chance to brainwash captured agents. So if you capture an agent, an enemy agent, they are putting operations on you, you have the chance to capture them. If we picked the consular fade router Harkonnen, we get the unique ability to corrupt a lens red resolutions. And we can use it on two ways. We can put the corruption by uh, spending 140 intel. It's rising over time, so it's not that expensive at start. On a um, positive resolution, we make it less attractive for other players, except for the Fremen, of course, who has not lance red standing. But it's um, more likely we get that resolution if we want that. We can use it aggressively on other factions by placing it on a negative resolution. And so the enemy player will suffer from both the negative resolutions and this minus 30 lands red standing. Let's get to the army composition. Harkon starts with a trooper who gets stronger the less HP he has. You usually only use him at start. The gunner has AOE attack and um, reducing the health regeneration from enemy units. And you can um, change him to the mini gunner. We have the Severus that splits into three unchained Severus upon death. Uh, synergies well with the other operations and abilities. We got the stairs probe. If it dies, um, every of the unit gets plus 10% power in the tile. We got the elite unit, the executioner, um, gets stronger and regenerates HP when units die nearby to a max of 10 times. So you can get 30% extra power and 30% health regeneration. Then we have the air units here, the Harpy gets 30% uh, extra power and speed uh, under 30% health and makes AOE damage and breaking armor, so pretty good flying unit. And we got the capital ship, the Overlord, um, it doesn't even cost um, command points anymore and they can send little flying ships to attack the enemy units. Then we have the mercenaries, like for every faction, only in case of fast resupplying your army or fast defending your uh, main base if you are under attack, because they are pretty expensive, especially in the upkeep. Arconnen upgrades in the barracks. I will tell you what I recommend and what are serious options. As you can see, the trooper has not many upgrades. He has just a health upgrade. You will anyway just use the troopers in the start. So um, it's even okay to not upgrade them at all. With the gunner, um, you have two different uh, tasks with them. If you want to attack an enemy army with them, you go for just straight extra damage. So uh, red fluid and better ammunition maybe. And if you want to break a main base, you want to have the Gatling gun. You lose demolition, but you regain the demolition um, if you upgrade this stuff again. So you ri rid apart the enemy main base armor in no time. With the Severus, it's pretty easy. You want them to die and you want them to do as much damage as possible before. So I go for just extra damage for them. The stealth probes uh, are different. You want them also to die early, but um, they make a just better job if you give them the, the melee upgrade. 
and the um, explosive upgrade so you can send them on the enemy um, range units and they have to deal with them and probably kill them in that time. You can get that extra intel if you want, if you are playing with many operations. Then we have our allied unit, the Executioner. And yeah, as you can see, we can make him even more powerful in attacks, or give him more armor, or um, more protective against area damage. This is always good if you play with mass artillery, mass um, uh, air units, but usually the idea is because he gets more damage the longer he fights and more reg regeneration the, the longer it's fight, he fights, you want him to be as tanky and strong as possible so he can fight any longer and get more of this bonus. So I upgrade usually a little bit more damage and try to compensate that with the armor again. So in the end he gets just two extra damage. In the operations we have standard, the probe setup, the defense sabotage uh, for taking out main bases or villages with turrets, the scavenger team, the combat drugs are specific, um, giving you 30% extra power and 10% extra speed, um, but their units um, lose health over time, this is, but this is no problem. Classic supply drop to get a supply and health regeneration. The EMP bomb to stop mechanic units. The very specific sleeper agent that gives you 50% chance to spawn sleeper agents. Pretty decent strong units um, after non-temporary or mechanical units die in the area. Defense breach if you want to take out a main base fast. The toxic vapors is Harkon specific and yeah, you, every unit in the tile, non-mechanical, uh, lose 20% health each day. And we get infiltration set. This is for the assassination later on. A good overall composition, but especially against main base, would be something like that. Having one or two elite units, having one or two gunners with the minigun and armor shred upgrade to get down the main base armor some stealth probes for the extra 10% power if they die in combat but have many many severus because they are synergizing um, most likely with your sleeper agent because you want them to die they are synergizing with your central command upgrade um, if unit dies near your other units you get to 20% extra power and this is a real main base breaker. In order to prepare to attack an enemy main base, um, you can improve the power of your units with uh, the three military main base district with two extra power for your units. You can build military bases at the border to get the extra 20% power for your units. You could make a military factory that gives you plus 15% power for your units. You can get plus 20% attack if you have 30% show. You get bloodbath for your units, um, up to 20% power for your units, depending on how many die, uh, units dies close to your units. You have the combat drug that gives plus 30% power. And yeah, you want to have sleeper agents um, that spawn right away if your units or enemy units die. You want to get some money back in that battle. And in our case, we have plus 70% uh, power. Um, depending on how many uh, stealth probes dies, it die even 120, or in this case 100, because we have only three stealth probes. With all your buildings and all your units that help you to get more damage, your army can get up to a maximum of 150-50% and for units like Executioner even more. 
um, by 185 percent and of course um, these are the most important um, operations but you could also use um, um, defense breaches to to end him faster and could always uh, use def defense sabotage um, to weaken the the cannon of the main base or the EMP bomb. So let's see how the army actually fights against the uh, enemy main base. You want to have that stealth probes at the front to get as fast as possible the extra extra ten percent power. And the gunners needs to attack the enemy main base armor as fast as possible. Let's see uh, where the boots are coming to. They can see it. As you can see, we shred pretty fast through the enemy armor. The enemy army is uh, already approaching now. Uh, if we are done with the armor, we can place everything of our operations. And sadly, we didn't lose our ropes yet. But as you can see, we really fast through that enemy base. We get a lot of uh, uh, extra. As you can see, we have bloodbath here. Uh, 10, 20% uh, extra damage. You can see, look a little bit around and can kill some single units to get more sleeper agents, get more money. But in case this guy is dead. How to place your agents. On espionage you can decide where to place your agents. Usually you start with Arrakis for the extra authority, for expanding faster and the ability to resolve point of interest without military units. Then you go for Chom to get your scavenger team and some extra money. Then you go for Spacing Guild for the combat drugs and manpower. And then you go for Lance Red to get the sleeper agents. If you have done that, you want to have two infiltration levels on every non-factional. So you can go for every operation because no operation is more expensive than two infiltration levels. And so in emergency you can go for every operation. Except for the assassination you need three on Affectional. And then you can just decide by the resources. If you need more authority, put more to Arrakis. If you need more manpower, put them to Space Guild. If you need more Solari, put them to Chome. And if you need more influence, you put them to Lance Red. With our agents, we can of course go for the assassination mission. Harkon is pretty good at that because he has many bonus that helps him to get extra agents like his unique ability by getting brainwashed agents for killing units, with his unique monitoring networks, and with Fade Router Harkonnen, who gives 100% extra agent recruitment speed. I prepared something for the assassination here. In order to assassinate someone, you need to place at least one agent here at the enemy faction then you can start with the infiltration cells operation this appears here you can use it somewhere on the enemy villages and you should do it as far as possible away from the main base and as close to you as possible so you can even defend that village you have an infiltration cell because the counter of that assassination would be for the enemy to send out units to investigate his villages and get rid of the infiltration cells and you can prevent that with your army. In order to assassinate you need two infiltration cells to unlock the last slot and if you have three agents there and race to level three then you get the assassination operation as you can see here three factional and one of every non-factional slots and then this window appears here. I prepared it already. In this case, we prepared an assassination on Atreides. 
Atreides already investigated one uh, infiltration cell and get rid of that, so we lost one slot. So we have only two agents now. And the timer of um, the assassination is depending on how many agents you have on the enemy faction and how many agents the other player has on counter intelligence. So it's important to not lose your infiltration cells to get faster done with your assassination. The enemy gets every 10 days an event that gives him the opportunity to either increase the duration of the assassination or um, make the upkeep more expensive. In this case we have 10, up, 10 intel upkeep and he can raise it and it will be more expensive every time. This time it's not very bad for us so um, we produce 9, 39 intel and we lose 10 intel. And so in the next 3.7 days, the player will be gotten out of that match. There it is. And then Arakin disappeared and all the villages. Last but not least, the nuclear silo. This costs us requirement 10 fuel and manpower and solari upkeep. We can produce a nuclear warhead for 5k solari and if we launch that, every faction will be in war with us. We lose our land rent standing, it goes to zero, so we are a pariah and will be attacked by the land rent guards. But we do 5k damage um, close to the explosion radius. Villages um, in the area will suffer minus 50% production for 20 days and the main bases will suffer minus 50% armor for 20 days. So we have an enemy main base here that is almost done. So don't hesitate to just launch a good old nuclear warhead. No armor anymore. I hope you enjoyed this guide and that it helps you playing House Harkonnen and Dune Spice Wars. It is one of my favorite factions and as you could see it has an answer to every win condition. If you have any feedback or questions don't hesitate to write them in the comments. I like to read them and I like to answer. Maybe we see us in the game. Good luck, have fun. See you mates.